another look versus to the film. Oh, I know, right? That was crazy, dyeing <laughs> my hair black. That was wild. I like this look. Thanks. <laughs> So let's talk about Agnes. You had several hats in this project. What was it that attracted you from day one that you decided to join as the executive producer? We were looking for something different to do in the horror space. Uh, we really enjoyed Mickey Reese's film, uh, Climate of the Hunter, and were really impressed that he was able to make that movie on such a shoestring budget that we thought maybe if we have a couple more resources, you know, we bring in a couple actors, we give him a little bit more money, um, he can make something even better. So really it was about um, supporting and giving a platform to another artist. Uh, so as a producer, that's what I was um, really drawn to and what I, what I will continue to be drawn to. You know, that's, that's the joy. It's um, creating a space for, other artists to continue to express themselves with just a few more tools at their disposal. That's great. I kind of find it more intriguing when I see that some of the talent is not only starring, but also, you know, contributing into making it happen because that means there's additional passion aside of the regular passion of acting. Yes, this was very much a, a true passion project, uh, a big swing. You know, it was, it was the type of thing that, um, that I really wanted to do. I, I connected with Mary and, uh, and her desire to try to hold something precious, you know, not being, not being ready to, to give it up, you know, not being ready to, uh, to move on. I, I really connected to that. <laughs> Not only that, but in the film, you not only play Mary, but you also play Sister Mary. So you have these a little separate roles. And well, that's interesting. In a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I think um, Mary will do anything it takes to, uh, to be in a space where she can contemplate the loss of her son all day long. I think that's why she becomes a nun. It's not to worship God. It's to be left alone. I mean, she purposefully joins an order that does no service for the outside community. They are a cloistered order, meaning they, they don't do anything. They, they pray and they stay to themselves. So it's kind of a, a perfect place to hide when you want to um, worship a past love, if, if you will. And then when the the upheaval happens inside the convent with Agnes and this possession, uh, and she's faced with some truths coming out of the mouth of this demon. She realizes that she she can't she can't stay because even this demon is telling her to move on. Mm -hmm. But she she's not ready to hear that, you know. So so it's it's in a way it's very easy for her to leave because her convictions were not to the church. Her convictions were to the memory of her son. Mm -hmm. And what about the, the part where also there's adapting again to a whole new world? Yes, uh, yeah, kind of the day-to-day the, the, the -day struggles and horror of, of regular life. Yes, um, gosh, and don't we all have stories like that? The, the boss who's inappropriate, uh, the, the struggle at you know, you found a place to live, but now the rent's going up and you don't really have any leg to stand on to fight it. So you just have to find a way to make it work. Um, and it's a real struggle. You know, I think the, the, the struggle to, to survive is, um, it's just something that I think all of us can, can relate to. And so when you're already dealing with that, how do you have time to to fix yourself and do deep dives and, and try to improve your life when you can barely get through the day. Uh, and so in the second half of the film, we, we do address that and, and we show that, you know, it's, it's crazy making, you know, Mary does not handle it well, whether you think it's, you know, that demon has followed her out of the convent and that's why she's acting 
pretty insane or if it's just how ridiculously difficult it is to make it through life you know it's like it's it's not easy that is very true and what was it like your preparation to portray a nun in this case? um pre preparing to to be a nun was secondary to understanding uh what it is to to be a mom uh because because that was so that was more central to to who mary was you know never having a desire to be a parent finding herself in a position that she's pregnant so she's gonna go on this path in life falling in love with that life finding meaning in it and then having it taken away you know so those are more the things that i focused on um i think her journey to the sisterhood um was pretty simple because she saw it as a place where she could be alone and and think about her son i also saw it kind of like look maybe she seeked for it for healing oh i don't think so i think that she would have been very happy to live out the rest of her life in in solitude and in contemplation of her life um, but that's not healing and i think that's that's more the the point you know that um even when she's thrown out of that world the the only way to heal is to deal with your trauma you know that's the only way i think that we can grow as individual humans is to to deal with with whatever our baggage is um so for me she doesn't really start the steps to healing um until the very last scene until she's sat down with um father benjamin who is someone who is willing to treat her like an individual and listen to her now it was interesting the metaphor used when it comes to god with the sandwich that was that was actually a brilliant scene Thank you, thank you. Jay Korowitz is a, a tremendous actor. It was, it was really delightful getting to work with him. I really enjoyed that. And you're at the end, you're like, you're you're eating God. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she's you know Mary's a a spitfire even at the end, uh, and she still you know she still asks him at the end. You know, it's it's not really fair to ask us to say goodbye. You know, we will all, if you really loved someone, you live with their memory forever. And that's all she wants someone to admit to that. Yes, there can be room for God in your life. There can be room for work and all this, but don't tell me that I'm supposed to forget the love that I had before or that joy. Show me a way that I can live with it, but, but move on. Will we know more about Mary? Because I feel like there could have been an open door for more. I mean, I'm sure there could be. Um, and, and that's interesting. I, I wonder, I wonder where she could go. Uh, more, more than seeing kind of a continuation, what I saw in the film and really liked was all the different lives and tangents we could have gone on. You know, she could have had a much fuller relationship with Paul Satchmo. Uh, she could have become a mom again. Who knows? Like that could have been a, a way towards healing, if you will. Um, or she could have succumbed to Curly, her boss at the grocery store, and started becoming a prostitute. You know, he's willing to pay her. He's, you know, really making it very easy. Um, so I would, I would almost be curious to to go back and and pick. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. You know, where would she have gone and how much worse could things have gotten if she, you know, hadn't to the minimal degree that she does stand up for herself and, and truly try to find um, some salvation, I guess. Well, thank you, Molly, for your time. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Same here. Take care.